title of this message this morning is Show Me Some ID. That's just what I, I was what I had in my head as I was studying this. What is ID? It's it's a form of identification, right? ID um, it identifies you as a citizen of a country or um, it legally identifies who you are. Sometimes you have to have your driver's license to show some ID, maybe your social security card, maybe your birth certificate. And with that ID, everywhere you go, you live as that person. I thought about, you know, you see shows on TV where people might have a fake ID or they might be in witness protection. So they're, they've taken on an identification that's not their own. But wherever they go, they are that person. We do the same thing with the identification that we have adopted for ourselves. What you identify yourself as is the life that you're going to live. It's just how it is. Who has given us a new identification? Jesus. Jesus provided an identification that I think a lot of times we haven't really adopted for ourselves. And that's what I want to get you to see this morning. That that identification, those characteristics, who you are, that Jesus has provided for you, is really who you are. Whether, whether you've adopted it or not. But when you do adopt it for yourself, that's really going to be who you are. That's really the life that you're going to live. That's why the Bible tells us to be transformed, not be conformed to the image of the world. Don't take on the identification of the world. But you be transformed. You adopt that new identification that Jesus has given you by renewing your mind. That's where all this adopting goes on. It's by renewing your mind. And when you do that, when you adopt that new ID and your mind is transformed, then you're going to be proof. You're going to live out and even proof for yourself and proof for other people God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. That will be your own identification. That's why I believe our identity is so important. We have got to get this if we're going to live changed lives. It is just so important. So we're going to talk about what would be on your ID as a citizen of the kingdom of God. How do we become citizens to begin with? By faith, like Abraham. So what happened with Abraham? Let's take a look at that. In Genesis chapter 15, I've provided these verses for you on your handout. So if you want to take the time later to go back and look these up, that would be a good idea. You're never going to get this in straight in your mind and in your heart if you don't put some effort into it and some time into it. This is what we've been harping on our kids just this morning, you know. If you want to play on the basketball team, you're going to have to put some effort, some practice, some time into it outside of school. Because it's not going to become a part of you until you do. 
Okay, so in Genesis chapter 15, we find Abraham here, and he has left the country God told him to leave. Um, he's, he's going to the place that God has told him to go, and the Bible has told us some events that have happened, and so he's, he's living for God, okay? He's doing what he's been told to do. But he still hasn't had a child. And he's been telling God, hey, you've done all these great, wonderful things for me. And, and that's just wonderful. But I don't even have someone to hand this down to. What good is this going to do my family? And he had just said, you know, I'm in a situation to where this, this kid who I've adopted who lives in my house, maybe even a servant, is going to be my heir. And it says, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now, from what I could find, Abraham was probably between around 75 and 86. So, so maybe around 70 years old right now. And God brought him outside. I guess it was at night. It says he brought him outside and he told Abraham, he said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Aren't you thankful for God giving you a picture of what to believe for? And verse 6 says, And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Abraham just legally became in right standing with God. What did it take? Just believing God. You're in the same boat. He is the father of all believers. This right here, I found it referenced three times in the New Testament. So this is confirming and reinforcing this idea that we come to salvation through faith. The first identification I want to bring up to you this morning is that you would be called a believer. You are a believer. I'm convinced that, you know, if you can believe that Jesus, God's son, came and lived on earth through a virgin birth and lived a sinless life, was crucified, buried, and raised to life, if you can believe that, you are officially a believer. And there is nothing else that could ever come across your path that you couldn't believe. If you can believe that, you can believe anything. A lot of times it's our choice and just our stinking thinking that, that gets us otherwise. Jesus told us that if you can believe... All things are possible. That was in Mark chapter 9. A man had brought his son to Jesus um, to be delivered. And he was telling him that um, how, how this demon um, affected his son. And he said, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus replied, if you can believe... All things are possible to him who believes. A lot of, a lot of um, translations translate this, if, if you can, like he's saying, if I can, if I can do anything, oh, I can do anything. You better believe it. <laughs> but he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to you. 
And what was the guy's response? It says, immediately he cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. How many times have you been there? <laughs> I know I have. It's like, I do believe you, and I want to believe you. Help me where those two things are not meeting. Your ability and my thought on that, help me. And I believe he honors that. He honors that cry. He knows exactly where the disconnect lies. And he sees your heart. He sees your desire for that. So this is an identification that I want you to take on this morning. Repeat after me. I am a believer. I want to hear it again. I am a believer. I am a believer. I'm a believer. Amen. If you have to repeat that to yourself this week. Yeah. There's so many situations that that's going to help you through. Yeah. Just, I believe, I believe you can, Jesus. Help my unbelief. But, but that's your new identification in Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't believe in the first place. But because of him, we have every ounce of belief that we'll ever need. We just have to believe it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number two, what else can you take on as your identification in Christ? You are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone's, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I loved the way that the Young's literal translation put this. It, it gave me a little chuckle. said, the old things did pass away, become new, have all the things. Can you hear Yoda saying that? <laughs> become new, have all the things. <laughs> and then I think of, like, all the things. Have you heard people say that, like, I want to do all the things. Like, Lord, help me with all the things. That means I can't think of everything to tell you right now, but I just want all the things. <laughs> Become new. Have all the things in you. You are a new creation. Repeat that after me. I am a new creation. A creation is something that's created out of nothing. It also references to, like, to build something habitable, something that can be lived in. What does that make you think of? Something habitable. Did you know that you're something habitable for God? as the new creation that you are. God created the world out of nothing. He created the stars out of nothing. The plants out of nothing. The animals. He created mankind. He took the clay out of the ground that he had already made. And created man and breathed the breath of life into him. That breath that wasn't there to begin with. But now it is. Because God created it out of nothing. And then you were born again as a new creation. Think of, you know, the butterfly. The little caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and just th 
through an amazing, almost miraculous, that we don't completely understand, process becomes goo. Just goo. Somehow. <laughs> and that somehow forms into a beautiful butterfly. And then he breaks out of his chrysalis. The butterfly became something out of nothing. And that we did as well. Could you agree with me that you had nothing before you had Jesus? You, your life was nothing before Jesus took it over? You have become something out of nothing. And we could, we could put it either way. So you became something out of nothing when you um, accepted the free gift of salvation. But also he provided it at the cross and when he was raised to life. A new creature isn't made of the same material, doesn't look the same, does not have the same form or function as the old creature, does it? Completely, totally different. That's who you are now. No longer the same. And on that note that I was saying that, that Jesus provided this when he accomplished what he accomplished, and the note in the mirror Bible, I wanted to share this with you. Where this verse says, if anyone is in Christ, it says the if in, if any man is in Christ, is not a condition. It is the conclusion of the revelation of the gospel. Man is in Christ by God's doing. Jesus did not reveal a potential you. He revealed the truth about you so you may know the truth about yourself and be free indeed. In the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God did not redeem a compromised replica of you. He rescued the original blueprint, you, created in his radiant mirror likeness. Any other self you're trying to find or esteem will disappoint. If you're living in anything other than this new life, new creation life that Jesus has revealed to you, you're walking around with a fake ID. Simple as that. He came to bring us truth. And that truth is what sets us free. So you, yourself, are a new creation. Number three, you are the temple of God. As the temple, you are a carrier of the spirit or presence of God. Do you believe that? Yes, you are. You are. And we're going to see proof of that here. Talking about the presence of God manifested here on the earth. We can go all the way back to the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness. They were led by God in a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud. Cloud by day, fire by night. That was God's presence represented with them. So imagine, if you will, if you were someone from another nation that maybe saw these people 
out in the wilderness. What do you think would strike you about these people? They had a pillar of fire <laughs> and a cloud that stayed with them at all times. Do you think they might have been characterized by that? That's those crazy people that the one true God is with, and he shows himself to them by fire and cloud. They were characterized by that, I believe. How does that relate to our life now? And then God had, ma had them make a tabernacle, and that fire and cloud stayed above the tabernacle. And we know that his presence rested as well in the Holy of Holies. And then David had a vision, and his son Solomon built that vision. They wanted a permanent dwelling place for God. Their idea, not his. So Solomon built this permanent dwelling place, and it says the glory of the Lord filled the temple, and his presence was in the Holy of Holies, in this temple. And when they were dedicating that temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, God said, for now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Well, is that true today? Jesus took that away, right? He provided the way when the veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the rest of the world was torn in two from top to bottom when he was on the cross. That was God saying, no longer am I confined to this little room. Jesus has accomplished my plan that I had from the very beginning, and that was for my presence to dwell in my people, and that you are. And several places in the New Testament, it confirms this. 1 Corinthians 3.9 says, We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? 2 Corinthians 6.16 says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Is that enough for you to believe that on your kingdom of God ID, it says temple of God, dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we will adopt this identification if you haven't already, because the realization that the Spirit of God himself is constantly with you, constantly in you, constantly present, will change your life. It has mine. That realization right there is so life-changing. Because there is not a thing in this world that you go through that he's not with you. There is not a problem or a question that you can face in life that he doesn't have the answer to and he's not right there to give it to you. Always, constantly, 100% inside you. He has filled you with himself. And that is so powerful. Thank you, God. I'm so 
thankful for your presence in me. Let's say that. Thank you, God, for your presence inside me. I am your temple. Amen. Amen. Well, some other things that you can look at. The three most common names for followers of Christ in the New Testament are, the first one is disciple. A disciple is a pupil or a learner. We are disciples of Jesus. And that is used over 250 times. Do you know you can identify yourself in the Bible? There you are, right there. You're a disciple. Close to 200 times brothers and sisters is used. That means your family. You are a direct descendant of the creator of the universe. And Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. He's your brother. And you are my sister or my brother. Thank God for that. The one I wanted to look more closely at is number three, saint. Saint is used more than 60 times to name followers of Christ in the New, the New Testament. Yeah. So we find that a lot of times, like in Paul's greetings to the churches when he writes them a letter, in Romans 1, 7, he wrote, To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, there's another identification, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That word called, it's a calling like, invited you're invited to be saints and saints means holy it's another word for holy there's actually 235 occurrences of this word altogether but it's not always referring to the saints the believers of christ you know who else it refers to? The Holy Spirit. Same word. Same word used to refer to you as a saint as is used to refer to God's Spirit as the Holy Spirit. That word means different from the world because like the Lord. His Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. And that's the first step in making you different. Remember, you're that new creation, so you're no longer made of the same thing that you were. You're made up of something different. And that sets you apart as a saint. You know, reading that in Romans 1-7, it's called to be saints. That's, that's a pretty common thing for us. We might just read over that verse really quickly. But what if you were in Rome and you received this letter and you realized that the Apostle Paul himself was calling you a saint. Wow. That would be pretty um, off-putting, intimidating, maybe surprising. Yeah. But he really did. He called you a saint. It's, it's on, your, on your ID. <laughs> it's found in here. Yeah. Used over 60 times in here. You're a saint. Wow. <laughs> In 1 Corinthians, at the very beginning of that, the second verse, he wrote, To the church of God who is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called saints. 
with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord? Let me see your hands. You call on his name, yes. And so you know what that makes you called? A saint. <laughs> Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. But if you think about it, like you're like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm no saint. <laughs> you may have said that before. <laughs> I'm no saint. <laughs> no, you're just walking around with a, a fake ID in your head. If you think about it, so we talked about how, okay, so we're a believer, and then we're a temple, we're the temple of God, and so what does that mean, who lives in you? The Holy Spirit, his presence lives on the inside of you, so if you think about it, why wouldn't you be called by the same name as that which you contain. Yeah. I mean, we think, oh, no, I don't need to be, I don't need to be called by the same name as the Holy Spirit, as God himself. But he lives in you. You are a container of his presence. You're a new creation you're new you're not the man whose id you've been carrying around all your life that's not really who you are your real id was created by god himself and jesus created by God, accomplished by Jesus, and enforced by the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. So forget about who you thought you were. What's really true is that you are a saint. <laughs> you can be called by that name. Because it, it, it's on your ID. You're just not familiar with it. And so what I, I would like for you to do is take this handout. Read these verses. Take a look at it for yourself. Talk about it with other people. Talk about it with somebody else. And I've listed a whole bunch of words on the bottom of that page of some other names that you could find on your ID. So many there. Pick a few out and take a look for yourself. I didn't give you the scripture reference for it on purpose because I want you to make the effort to find it. Find proof in your Bible that you are some of these words. Prove it to yourself. I don't need to prove it to you because there's a lot that can happen between these lips, those ears, and that mind. But you put your eyes on this word and you find that in there. I recommend doing an internet search if you don't know where to find it. It makes it simple. If you don't do that kind of thing, you could ask somebody else. Somebody else could do an internet search for you. Hey, where do you think I would find that I am a friend of God? Th my pastor told me that that's, that's what I'm called now. And, and I don't really get that. I've never considered myself a friend of God. I don't understand how he could be my friend when I can't see him and go places with him and hang out and do all of that stuff. Find it in the word where it says. And then ask him to help you 
realize this. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and Jesus said that he would bring you all truth and that he would show you who Jesus is. And in doing that, he's going to show you who you are. Because there's a lot of things to you that you don't realize. I don't realize. Nobody else knows. But he does. So you think you can do that? Okay, good deal. Look through there and find some things that you, you want to believe. What do you want to believe about yourself? This is a good start right here. Something else maybe too. Okay, everybody stand up. Okay, let's say it again. I am a believer. I am a new creation. I am the temple of God. He calls me a saint. Thank you, Lord. God, I, I thank you for this truth that you're showing us. Lord God, I thank you that it is your 100% intention to show us who you made us to be. And you are continuing to make us to be that person. That we would begin to walk out our new identification in you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are so faithful to show us the truth and show us the way and shine a light on our path. So, God, I thank you for hungry hearts. Lord, I thank you for soft hearts, hearts that are ready to be led in the right direction and take that next step with you. God, I thank you that you are their friend, that you are their constant companion, that you are their ever-present help in a time of need. I thank you that you are real to us and you are willing to be yourself with us. Lord, I pray that we would begin to be ourselves with you. Thank you for the grace and the ability to hear, to learn, to know, and to walk this word out. Amen.